All right, so you are welcome back to this uh, ethical hacking training. And uh, in this video, we're going to see how we can set up Kali Linux in a Hyper-V platform. All right, so we are going to be setting it up using Microsoft Hyper-V. And um, I just want to show you my system configuration here. So if you look at here, if you have gone to Explorer, so you open up File Explorer on your system, you go to this PC, right click on this PC, and then you um, select properties, you're going to get here. So um, a point on my system is 16 gig of RAM, and um, this is Core i7 system, this is 2.8 gigahertz, uh, the processor speed. And what I actually want to point out here is that if you look at Windows Edition, uh, this guy is on Windows 10 Professional. All right. Make sure that the Windows machine that you are using, if you are using Windows, is Windows 10 Professional, Windows 10 Enterprise. It could also be Windows 11 Professional or Enterprise. Um, Windows Home Edition is not uh, suitable for this lab. So if you are having Windows 10 or Windows 11, the Home Edition, um, just try to go to uh, properties of your disk PC and you're going to know whether you are using Pro, Enterprise or Home Edition. Home Edition is not going to support um, hypervisor uh, client, but if you are using a professional edition of Windows, um, you are going to have this feature of Hyper-V where we are going to head over to program some features on the control panel of this machine and enable Hyper-V. We will have to restart the system after that and then we'll uh, take it up from there. So let's head over to the control panel. So in here, I'm just going to search for control panel so this is the control panel here uh, let's open it up so on the control panel we locate programs and features so I'll probably go for large icon make this bolder make it easier for me to locate uh, programs and features um, scroll down in here this is programs and features so select programs and features and we head over to turn windows features on and off and select that guy, wait for this window to pop up. And uh, these are actually optional services in Windows. So these optional services is turned on when you need them. Uh, most of them are turned off uh, by default. So here, um, we're going to expand on Hyper-V. And you make sure that you tick the boxes here, Hyper-V Management Tools, as well as the Hyper-V Platform. Um, so you also want to know if your system supports Hyper-V in the first place. So if I go to Task Manager, so if I go to Task Manager, as a matter of fact, there are different ways to check it. So uh, is either you check it on Task Manager or you go to Windows Command Prompt, and also check it there. So head over to performance on the task manager. Performance. And we are going to look for CPU. So this is the CPU here. Click on CPU. And down here, you could see uh, virtualization technology. You can see here is enabled. Um, if your system wouldn't support virtualization, um, on the visualization um, here, you are going to see not capable. All right. So that's one way to check if you are able to do what I'm showing you here. Go into programs and features and turning on these two boxes on the Hyper-V. The moment you click on OK, you are going to wait for the changes to apply. And once that is done, your system is going to prompt you to reboot and you're going to head over. To reboot your system don't doubt already because if i'm rebooting now it's going to disrupt this recording uh, if i go to cmd which is command prompt and in here i type sys 
system info uh, for system make sure the first s is capital okay so i probably will bring this to the window here and you can see the os is microsoft windows 10 pro right so just type system info on your command prompt on the search open up your windows cmd and uh, make sure the first s is cap but i want to go straight up to uh, the virtualization support on this uh, machine uh, this is another way so you could see this system is um, hp machine and a whole lot of information about this system is here and um, here we have the model uh, and then it's a 64 bit operating system so i want to quickly uh, go over to virtualization um, let's try to locate virtualization status okay so this is it here so hyper v requirements um so you could see it supported it so a hypervisor has been detected uh, features required for hyper v will uh, let's see what's there will not be displayed all right but what is important here is that hypervisor is supported on this machine so you do something in this um, your pc to check if um, hypervisor is supported if it's supported then head over to control panel go to programs and features and on the left hand side here uh, click on turn windows features on or off expand hyper v and turn these two guys up and then click on ok and wait for the changes to apply then reboot your machine now that you have done that and you have rebooted your machine we are going to go all over to the um, hypervisor itself so i'm going to go to my search on the um, bottom of my system and type uh, hyper v i uh, should see a shortcut to get to that guy all right so once the system reboots then you should be able to search for hyper v and you could see here hyper v manager launch that guy all right so this is the management tool for hypervisor and um, a whole lot of things could be done here same way you do this stuff on vmware workstation player as well as on uh, virtual box uh, so i want to head over to setting up um, the kali linux um, for the microsoft hyper v this is the pre-built kali images not the iso file uh, so a whole lot of features here right so you could go to new and you begin to create a new virtual machine you could also create a virtual hard disk and one more thing that is of note here is if you look at virtual switch manager um, you could actually create a virtual switch right so this is a switch where all your virtual machines will attach to to make them uh, be on the same network so the network type of the adapter could be private internal or external if you want the machines to have access to the internet so we're going to be using the default switch um, the, which is pre-built in this hypervisor and all the machines who set up in this hypervisor will be um, configured to join the virtual switch the default switch here so you could see here default switch um, you can as well go and create your own switch if need be all right so let's also quickly import um, the hypervisor so if i go to my download directory here you are going to see i've got uh, kali linux 2023.4 for vmware for hyper v and i think i've also got it for virtualbox all right so let's go ahead and open up this kali linux is a seven zip uh, document already i've extracted it so we go open up this folder kali linux for hyper v you are going to see um we have three files there all right so this is a batch file here this install vm is a batch file right so it's just a script and this script is going to do the magic 
that we need to get this um, Kali Linux uh, installed on the Microsoft Hyper-V. And uh, this is the hard drive, well, which are about 15.3 gig um, that have the, all the files that this Kali machine need to work. All right. So what we are going to do now is first off, we are going to close this Hyper-V manager, right? And on this download of Kali Linux 2023.4 Hyper-V, um, open up the folder and double click on install VM, which is this batch file here. So I'm going to double click on it. All right, so it's going to open up in my command prompt. Uh, if, you if you didn't log into your Windows as an administrator, then it's going to ask you for admin privilege. So I'm going to say yes, and it opens up the Windows command prompt and allow it to do its thing. So it's going to run a couple of scripts that will help us to install the hypervisor. And at the end of the day, uh, all things being equal, you are going to see a screen like this. All right. So the first line here says your Kali Linux virtual machine is ready. In order to use it, start your Hyper-V manager. All right. So just leave this window the way it is and head over to the start and uh, type in Hyper-V on the start of um, your machine, which actually are the search of your machine. So launch the Hyper-V manager and we're going to see our um, Kali Linux show up here uh, as a result of the script that you just run on this command prompt, right? So in here we have Kali, but it's powered off. So you could see the state is off. So what we're going to do is to right click on this machine and click on connect. And then we'll head over to click on start. Okay, so the virtual machine is turned off. Start. And so the machine is going to power on now. So wait for the machine to power up. That's actually how to set up Kali, the pre built machine on Microsoft Hyper V. So the previous video before this one. We already seen how we can download the Kali uh, from Kali.org. Um, we did download for VMware Workstation and also for VirtualBox as well as Hyper-V. Okay, but this video is focusing on how to set it up on Hyper-V. So please watch the previous video before this to see how it's set up on a VMware platform. So, yeah, so the machine is here and uh, by default, the Kali comes with a username and password, which the username is Kali as well as the password. So username, password is same. So click on login here and the Kali Linux is now set to be used or the Microsoft hypervisor. All right, so we could um, uh, check if this guy has got internet. So in here, we'll open up terminal on this Kali machine and um, we can do a whole lot here, All right? So first off, let me check if I have internet connection, 4.2.2.2, sure, I've got access to the internet, control C to abort it, and then control L to clear the screen. And let me check my DNS by pinging google.com. Correct. So everything seems to be well on this machine. So control C again to abort it and control L to clear the screen. So uh, the machine is set. Um, so we can use this um, anyway. We don't have any other machines on this um, uh, hypervisor, but we could set one up. I'm not going to cover that, but it's pretty much uh, straightforward. So in here, you just go to new and you go to virtual machine and you follow the instructions on the screen, right? So next, and then give the virtual machine a name, next, and just leave it on generation one, next, and decide how many gig of RAM that you want to give to that machine. 
next and then you define what switch the machine should connect to by default we haven't created our own switch so we are using the default switch so you notice the Kali machine also is connected to the switch so if we create another machine on that same switch then those two machines should be able to talk to each other next and then you define how many gig of hard drive you are going to allocate to this machine um, you could just give it 20 gig and next is going to ask us where the operating system is so if you are using iso you are going to navigate to um, this and say you want to use iso file and then you browse to where your windows server iso file or your windows 10 iso file is located select the iso file next next and finish and then power on the machine so pretty much straightforward to set up another machine on this platform so that will be the size of this video uh, if you have gotten a value for this video kindly subscribe to the channel and then see you in the next tutorial bye for now